can start by showing a website that might be useful. You reach it by typing crate.msdm.com. And it's the hub for for everything that has to do with development on the Windows Phone. Here you can download free tools and you can join a marketplace to submit a game. And there's lots of links where you can find resources, how to cool stuff, and forums where you can ask questions and answer questions, and follow blogs, both the Windows Phone blog and it's an A game blog. So create.msdn.com is a good website. It's called App Hub. Um, I'm going to show you Sketchflow, which is a tool that is part of a program called Expression Blend. And um, it's a tool for creating interactive prototypes. So you can create prototypes for whatever. It doesn't have to be Windows Phone specific. I'm going to start by showing you how to create a prototype for a website, for example, uh, and show you also how you can use Sketchflow for the phone. Because um, the Sketchflow part for the phone it's a separate thing. It's not built into the program yet. But I'll show you how to download it from the from our open source page if you want to use Sketchflow for the phone. But I'm going to start showing you the main uh, concept of Sketchflow by showing a prototype um, that I have already done a couple of times. Um, this is how it looks like when I start Expression Blend, which is a Microsoft program aimed for uh, making the user interface for anything. So I start by clicking New Project. And here I can see what kind of projects I can create. Um, in the Windows Phone part, uh, you can create different kinds of Windows Phone applications. I'll go through this later, but I just want to show you the Sketchflow first. And I have already installed the Windows Phone Sketchflow part, so I can see that I can also create a Sketchflow application for Windows Phone. But I want to start by creating a more general Sketchflow application, so I choose Silverlight which is sort of Microsoft equivalent to Flash, if you generalize it a little bit more. Uh, but here I can choose to make a Silverlight Sketchflow application that I can publish to the web and let people comment on it and get feedback. Yep. Didn't they just discontinue Silverlight? No, no. We have a new version of Silverlight coming. Okay. So the current version is Silverlight 4, and we have Silverlight 5 beta out, and the, the Silverlight 5 is coming. Okay. And uh, whenever you develop uh, an app for the Windows Phone, it's Silverlight app. Okay. If you want to make a game, you can use XNA, uh, which is a separate language. But for app, it's still Silverlight, based on Silverlight. So it's also easy to publish it to a platform, uh, like the internet? Um, yes, but I don't think you would publish a phone app to the internet, per se. <laughs> But you can publish similar like apps to the internet. Yeah. Yeah. How many language options are there? Um. Right now, I only have still like. No. No. Down. 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 Yeah, I see. Visual C. Sharp. Visual C. Sharp. Visual C. In the drop down. Ah, there. there. Yeah. Visual Basic. Visual C. Uh, C Sharp. Okay. For WPF. Same thing here. <coughs> So what I want to start with is showing you a general Sketchflow application. So I'll use uh, Silverlight. But with the Blend, I don't really need to know Silverlight programming or anything. The point of Sketchflow is for interaction designers to quickly put together a prototype, showing the interaction, get generate feedback from customers or partners and stuff like that. <clears throat> so let's pretend that I'm an interaction designer. And I have a customer who wants me to create a website. And that website should sell t-shirts. And people that come to the website should be able to log in and design their own t-shirt and then order it. So I go to my office and try to make a prototype to show my customers my ideas. So when I start a new schedule program, this is what you'll see. I have very small screen estate. Now when I have this table connected to it, but this is how it looks like. The metal part is called an art board. <clears throat> here is my canvas, so, so to speak. Here's where I'll paint stuff and put content. And I'll close this one. And here at the bottom, you'll see my sketch flow map. You can see this as a flow chart, for example, uh, that will, that will depict, 
uh, show how user can navigate on the website on this instance and what screens that are included. For example, this blue thing corresponds to this screen that I have opened up here. So I can double click my blue thing and rename it to home because I want to start drawing my home screen. <coughs> Uh, but before I start adding content, I would like to um, quickly sketch out my flowchart for this website. So when I hover above this existing blue screen, I can click the first icon to create a connected screen. So here I want to be able to have the login screen. And if you look closely, you'll see that there is a arrow pointing from the home screen to the login screen here. And this arrow is supposed to show that from the home screen, the user should be able to navigate to the log screen. So you can easily show your customer uh, the flowchart on your website or your app. And you can also create a new screen by right-clicking on an empty space and choose Create a Screen. Here I call this design. Here's where people should be able to choose a color on the t-shirt. Um, I can, whenever I want to, uh, connect two screens to each other by uh, dragging and dropping screens to connect the arrows. And then at the end, I want a screen where people can order my t-shirt. I can also change color on this um, screen on the map. Maybe I want to change the order screen to white to show that this one is important. This is the goal of the whole website. And as you can see, they ha at the uh, at default, the screens have the name of the colors, but you can easily change that meaning yourself. You can go to Window, no, sorry, Project, and choose Sketchflow Project Settings to name what those different colors should mean. For example, this should be the gold screen, the white. You can also change the color of the arrows to show a certain meaning of them. Anyway, uh, now I have uh, my, my flowchart, for example, for my website. I want to drive people from the home screen to the order screen. And let's start by adding content to the login screen. I double click it to have it open. You can also see all of my open screens here on top of different uh, tabs, so I can switch between them. So in my login screen, I'll pull down to give me more space. In my login screen, I want to add uh, content. In Blend, you can find an Assets panel up there, where you can find uh, components that you can use in order to draw stuff. For example, buttons, uh, calendar checkboxes, and so on. So these are functional, functional components. A button will be clickable and stuff like that. So you don't have to code it. You can just drag and drop it out on the screen. What's What's interesting with Sketchville is that there's a specific kind of components called sketch style components. These are functional components just like the normal ones, but they have a sketchy look to them just to make it extra obvious that this is just a prototype. So if I choose the button sketch and I draw it out here, you'll see what I mean. I'll zoom in. You'll see that the border are not straight, but a little bit, it should look like they're hand-drawn and the font as well. I don't know if you're familiar with Bill Buxton. It's a, he, he, he has written a lot of user uh, interaction books and that's his handwriting. So, um, yep, that's his handwriting. Um, so it's called even Buxton Sketch or something like that. He works for Microsoft, so it's not a weird thing. Um, so yeah. I can continue with this by adding other components. I can change the text on my button by double clicking and change the login. And I can add text boxes or text blocks where people can write text in. For example, here I would like uh, people to enter the username, for example. Oh, sorry, uh, text box. Text block is uh, just a text area. Text box will let the user enter text in it. Then I can also pull out a password box where people can enter the password and when people enter text it will be uh, um, it will show circles instead of the actual characters. 
I'm not gonna put a lot of effort into making it look good. So you get the idea. You can pull out things and draw them out on the sketch uh, artboard. So let's say I don't wanna draw my whole interface um, by hand in Sketchflow. Let's say I started out by sketching on paper. I can easily scan those sketches and import them in here and add interactivity. And I'd like to show you how. So let's um, go to home. Okay, we're a bit. Double click my home. Now I'd like to import the sketch that I've already drawn. So I'll go to my projects tab. Here I'll see all my files that are related to this Sketchflow project. You see the design page, the login page, or the page and home page. And I can right click here to add a folder. I'll choose add a new folder and call it images. Can I, can I break yeah. into something? Uh, you might have noticed that it says design example up there and login example. What this is doing and what Silverlight is, is uh, a very clear way to uh, present design to somebody in an XML file. So this isn't just uh, writing to a black box and a binary file somewhere and you only can edit through this. This is actually, when you draw the button, it's editing in an XML file that you can later edit in another way or anything like that. And that's what Silverlight is. It's a standard for how user interface and other things should be designed. So if you really wanted to, you could also program an F sharp or any other .NET language if you adhere to the Silverlight standard. I can show you what Robert means. If I open the login page, here you can see my drawn stuff. I can change. Now, right now, I'm in design view. If I change to XAML view, which is the code view, you can see that I could have written the button out like this if I wanted to code it. And I can also have split view, so I see the things. This is a text box. I can see that's how it looked like. And if I wanted to learn how to write example, I can uh, draw things and see what's the text behind. Excuse me. Yeah. Example. Well, that's example file. Yes. Uh, it's all XML or HTML. Yes. Uh, but it's a language to, how do you say, how to create the user interface. Like the layout. Yes. So example is the layout page. And then for each. Each layout page that I have, there's a code behind the page, which I'm not going to show so much. And that's the C sharp code. And that's where the programmers write the functionality. So in the example code, here, I write the user interface. And for each user interface page, there's a code behind the page. So handle the functionality for that view. So you can see it as three different layers. At the bottom is the code behind C sharp for functionality, and then there's an example, this. You can write the interface, or you can just draw the interface uh, in the design view up here. So I'll stay in the design view for the rest of the, uh, the demo to show that you can add stuff without touching the underlying things if you don't want to.